I want to show you a few of the basics of um, using the classroom management software. First thing is we've already joined our students to um, the class, but I want to point out that you can drag these icons around. So you could put them in the order that they're sitting in your classroom, and that may help you find students quickly a little bit easier. Um, up here, you can switch this over. I had it on actually already to show the battery life of each student so you can tell when their computers are starting to run low. That may be a very helpful option for you. This button is um, the registration. Again, if your students, for some reason, you know, especially the first time they sign in, it's possible that this may just say student and you want to put their name on that machine. So you can go in here and you can select them and then you can make sure it says for student registration. Make sure you have students should provide name checked and then you'll click start and that will force the students to register for your class. Um, and then it'll put their name into that, that box. So you can force that if something's not looking right. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. Um, here is a way to silence the um, student screen. So I can select a student, I'll select Sally here. And if I click this button, um, you can't see it right now on this screen, but on her screen, it's a completely black screen and it says silence across it. Um, in big bold letters so she can't do anything she's completely locked down and then to give her control back I can click this blue button and that will um, give her the control of her computer back as well now honestly I'm not sure um, this says lock and unlock all students in a class model but I haven't got that to do anything so I'm not sure um, what the reason is but you can always use these buttons instead you can also select the whole class so I can select more than one student I just dragged my mouse around all the little icons and selected both students and I can put them both on silent at the same time and there it goes it finally changed to show you that Sally's on silent mode Ben is not reconnected here um, so those are some of those basic things. Now, all of these options over here, or at least most of them, you can get to from the floating toolbar. You're not going to want this screen to be up in front of you all the time while you're trying to teach. You're going to need your computer screen. So if you go up here to this little line, this is your minimize line, and when you click it, it's going to give you a toolbar so that you can access pretty much all of those same features but you don't need to have the whole classroom software suite open if you want that screen back that first button will get it back for you so i want to quickly go over the options up here this is one you're going to want to use quite a lot to um, broadcast your screen for example i have this video here on the parts of speech and i want the whole class to see it and we're going to discuss it I don't want each student to watch it individually because if every student is downloading the same video at the same time, that's the kind of thing that takes up our bandwidth and makes it so that our internet speed is slowed down for everyone in the whole corporation. So instead, I want to show this video once, but I want all the students to see it. Now you could do that on a projector or your big TV in your room, broadcast it for the whole class to watch up there. But if you want it on the screen right in front of the students so that they may be a little bit more focused, you can click this broadcast screen button and it's gonna tell you that. And if you get tired of that little message popping up, you can just check that little box and click okay. And now it's gonna broadcast my screen to all of my students. So their screens go black for just a second and then all of a sudden they are seeing what's on my screen right in front of them. So then I can click play. The sound is gonna come from my machine, but on their machines they can see exactly what's being shown on my screen. And I can make this full screen as well, and it'll go full screen um, on their computers too. So that's just an example of a way that you can um, can broadcast your screen so that students um, can all see it right in front of them, but you're not, you're only really streaming the video one time and you're not tying up our whole system with that. Um, and then of course you can stop broadcasting your screen with this X button. And now it's no longer broadcasting to the students. 
Right here is a button that does exactly the same thing, except it only broadcasts your voice, not the actual picture that's on your screen. So you might find a, a use for that as well. Oh, stop my video from playing here. Okay, now I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to a different page and show you the next feature. You can bring up a pen or a pencil. You can bring up some annotation tools here. And let's say that I want to mark some things for the students here. We have some sentences and we're going to talk about these. Um, sentence number one, Dorothy is a young orphan who live with her aunt um, lives right here. We want to talk about that there's something wrong with this word and what do we need to change to make the grammar of this sentence correct. So I can mark um, on here any way I want. I can annotate with my pencil. If you want to save this, you would want to do a screenshot, um, which you can do with the print screen button on your computer as well. When I X out of this toolbar, it does delete the markings that are on my screen. The next button is your screen record button, and this is going to allow you to create what I'm creating right now. Now, I'm using a program called Screencast-O-Matic at the moment, but you can do something similar with this screen record button and create a little mini video of uh, what you're doing on your screen. You could then upload that video into My Big Campus so that students could access it later. So if you went through these sentences and, and did these markings, you could be recording that as a video and the students would be able to see you and hear you doing those things if they wanted to watch that later on. The next button allows you to monitor your class. So when I click on that, and it, it usually takes just a minute to load here, but I can bring up little mini windows of each of the students that are enrolled in my class. And like I said, Ben didn't register earlier when we, um, it's not his fault, I, I didn't hit the button. Um, so we only have one at the moment, but um, you can see a little window here for each student. And if I had, you know, much more than two students, of course, they wouldn't all fit on my screen. So I can use these buttons to um, go between them. This would make it automatically cycle through and pop up different screens um, on your screen so that you can monitor the students. So I'll click off of that. Um, file distribution. This is a way that you can send a file to all of your students at once. So when you click on this button, the student screen, um, they lose control of their screen and it brings up um, a big spreadsheet that's going to show what file is being sent to them. So I can go in here and I can click on my desktop or wherever I have my file saved that I want to send to the students. I have one in here somewhere. Um, so let's say that I want to send them this, um, gra this picture image. I can click on it. I can click this Add button. And then I can click this button to send it. And that's going to send that file to all of the student machines. And it'll place it um, wherever I told it to. And in this case, I told it to put it in the desktop. OK, so there's that image that I sent to them. So I can close out of those. Um, this is the same sort of feature, only it's to send a movie. If you have a movie file stored on your computer, we're not talking about something that you would stream from the internet, but if you have something actually stored on your computer, like an MP4 file, you can distribute that to your students and they can watch it on their computers. Um, this is for remote shutdown. If you need to quickly shut down another student's computer or reboot it, you can use that option. Um, I would recommend you stay away from the remote command button um, and most of the option tools you're probably going to want to leave alone as well. So there's an overview of all the um, different features that you have. Um, and there are certainly a lot more features. There's QuizMaker and, and all these other things. And those will come in future, sorry, those will come in future videos, video tutorials that I will be creating and uploading to the web. As always, email me your questions, or better yet, go to My Big Campus and click on the Using Your DAC Tech discussion in the Southwest Park Digital Curriculum group and post your question there because someone else may have that question as well, and that way I can answer those questions for everybody all in one place.